Welcome to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Presentations. In this series we will be discussing lighting, specifically artificial light in commercial environments. Light is an important element that can change the spatial effect in a room. It can be used to theatrical effect to the extent where it can almost become form itself. The image of the work of artist James Terrell shows how light can make the boundary of space disappear and become a volume. In many instances, the work of spe specifying lighting falls under the remit of services engineers who need to work within strict regulation that determines the amount of light needed. This can result in a space becoming a soulless environment and it's the job of architects to understand the concepts and opportunities that lighting provides so that the architectural intention of space is not compromised. Lighting levels and the perception of light is based on a number of components that are part of the light emitting element itself, as well as the way it is perceived as a consequences of the surfaces the light reflects off. The basic measure of the amount of light emitted from a light source is luminous intensity. This is how bright the light appears. Light is presumed to emanate from its source in a uniform manner, much like an expanding spe sphere. The measure of light is to sample the amount of light in one part of the spherical surface. The area measured is a steradian. The definition of a steradian is best understood by the diagram on the slide. Luminous intensity is the amount of light emitted from a point within a solid angle of one steradian. The unit of measure for luminous intensity is candelas. The total amount of light emitted in all directions is known as luminous flux. It is the light emitted in all directions and is measured as lumens. The amount of light that falls onto a surface is a measure of the luminous flux over a defined area. Illuminance is the total luminous flux over one meter squared and is measured as lux, which is lumens per meter squared. The perception of light depends in part on the properties of the, of the surface that the light falls on. A white shiny surface will reflect more light than a matte black rough surface. The reflective properties of a surface is defined as the exitance, how much light is bounced off and reflected into the eye. The measure of light perception is defined as luminance, which is the amount of light entering the eye. The surface is treated in some ways like a light source itself. The measure of the light coming from that surface is luminance and it is measured in candelas per meter squared. The measure of light is important as it establishes benchmarks for lighting performance in work and public environments to ensure that there is a safe level of light to perform tasks without causing long-term damage to health. The Australian Standard AS 1680.1 defines the amount of light required in different scenarios. Specialist servicing and lighting engineers are tasked with ensuring that the lighting specified meet these standards as part of compliance with building regulations. The challenge, therefore, is to understand the balance between performance or quantifying light compared to the quality of light and the impact of the space. The way light performs in a space to meet minimum standards can result in spaces that are of uniform dullness and monotony that, whilst meeting standards, can lead to the creation of soul-crushing environments. So we need to acknowledge that spaces must meet certain performance standards. We know how light is measured and the component parts of the measure and characteristics of light perception. The question remains though, as designers, what strategies and technologies we can employ to use light architecturally rather than simply meeting codes? Essentially, does lighting need to be boring? We will cover some properties of light and specific technologies in the other presentations, 
so be sure to check in with the other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.